Hey everybody, so this is Unit 3, Module 2, Session 7. Um, as always, make sure you try some of these, pause it, check your work. If you got it, then pause it and try it on your own. Um, and just use me to kind of check your work. But if you get stuck, make sure you play it, go until you get it, and then, then try and pause it. Alright, so this first one around to the nearest whole number. So the nearest whole number is, I would call that the ones place. So um, nearest whole number... Um, the nine is right there and so I'm going to look at this seven and since that seven is five or greater we're going to round that nine up to a ten so we're going to round it up to a ten um, next one now the nearest whole number the whole thing is it going to be 16 or is it going to be 17 I look at this four it is less than five I don't even have to worry about that number right there I'm only looking at the four so that's going to stay 16. The next one is 25 and 3 tenths. I'm looking, I want to round the 5. Is it going to be 25 or 26? I look at the 3. And so that's going to stay, because that 3 is less than 5, it's going to stay at 25. Okay. Nearest tenth. So now I'm looking in the tenth place. So there's all my tenths. Oops, that one disappeared. So let's look at the first one. There's a five next to it. So that's going to say, instead of um, 16 tenths, it's going to be 17 tenths because of that, that five. So it's going to be 17 tenths or one and seven tenths. Now I'm going to look at this one. Well, that's less than five, so it's going to be three tenths. And then this zero is going to be a zero or a one. There's a seven next to it, so it's going to go up. And so it's going to be eight and one tenth. All right, let's keep going. They say this is a challenge. I think you should try it. Nearest hundredth. I'm going to look at my hundredths. I have 35 of them. There's a one next to it, so that's going to stay at 35 hundredths. I'm going to look at my hundredths. There's an eight, just 28 hundredths. So there's a nine next to it, so it's going to round up to 29 hundredths. And then this one, there's one hundredth in it. Um, there's a six next to it, and so that's going to round up to two hundredths, three and two hundredths. All right, let's keep going. I'm going to keep with this green. They want us to solve these. So they want to add these up, and they are pretty nice to us. Oh, not solve. They're not add them up. There's one subtraction problem in there. Um, they gave us, they lined the decimals up for us already. If there happened to be a, a blank spot or an uh, unfilled uh place value we could put a zero we could attach a zero in there um, as necessary so those decimals can line up but let's go ahead and just go ahead and do these so this is algorithm straight up algorithm uh, you can also do it other ways um, i'm going to add my eight and three for 11 and carry my one uh, five plus four is nine plus the one is ten so i'm going to carry another one i bring that decimal straight down and eight plus two is ten plus my one up there is eleven and one hundredth all right, look, we don't have to borrow on these. I love it. 8 minus 6 is 2. 9 minus 7 is 2. Bring my decimal straight down. 8 minus 4 is 4. 4 and 22 hundredths. Uh, let's add these ones. So 9 plus 2 is 11. Carry the 1. Looks like I have an 8, 1, and 1. That's a 10. Carry the 1. Bring my decimal straight down. Um, I do a lot of 10s. 1 plus, so 7 plus 2 is 9 plus the 1 is 10. Carry the 1, and then that's a 3. So 30 and one hundredth. So now this next one, they didn't, they weren't as nice, but I don't think it's gonna be too bad. I'm gonna take this number, put it underneath. Two and 53 hundredths. No borrowing, that was nice of them. Nine minus three is five, nine minus five is four. Bring my decimal straight down. Notice how I lined up those decimals. Nine minus two is seven, seven and 45 hundredths. All right. Um, I'm going to put the 13 on top, if that's okay with you guys. Um, and there's a 7. I'm adding it. Because in addition, it doesn't matter the order in which you add them. So I'm going to put it up on top. 7 plus 1 is, well, that's 15. Then i got a 7 here. Bring that decimal straight down. I have a 7 plus 3 is 10. Carry the 1. 20 and 75 hundredths. All right, uh, they're going to make us borrow here. So now we're going to subtract this. We're going to line up that decimal. Super important. 
Well, that's an eight. It might have made it worse. Okay, let's subtract. So there's a lot of borrow in here. You ready for this? Um, I got to borrow from all the way, oops, sorry, all the way from this one over here. So it becomes a zero. This becomes a 10, but I'm going to borrow from it. Tons of borrowing. 10. I'm going to borrow from it. 10. I'm going to borrow from it. And this becomes a 13. Now I have all my numbers. Let's see if I can keep them straight. 13 minus 8 is 5. Oh, I keep doing that. I apologize. Probably makes your screen go weird. Uh, 9 minus 2 is 7. Bring that decimal straight down. 9 minus 6 is 3. And 9 minus 1 is 8. 83 and 75 hundredths. All right, let's go to the next page. Story problems. Love story problems. Got to figure out what in the world they're saying, right? Um, so they want us to use numbers, labels, sketches, or words. So any of those. So you could do it totally different than I do, too. Rachel has $10. She wants to buy a book that costs $6.79. Will she have enough money left over to buy a pen for $3.50? There's a few ways you could do this. You could subtract. Um, you could add to subtract. You could actually add the 350 to 679 and see if um, see if those are less than ten dollars. In fact, I'm going to do that. So I don't care with you guys. You do it however you want to. I'm just going to add these two numbers, and they should fit under ten dollars. Otherwise, my answer is no. So 679. I don't know this is a conventional way to do it, but. I'm just gonna try that and add that up. This is what she needs to buy the pen. That's the pen that she's gonna buy the book for sure. Okay, so nine, um, five plus seven is 12. So I don't care that, I'm gonna bring my decimal straight down. Six plus three is nine, plus one is 10. She does not because it would cost 10.29. So no, needs, I guess I should put she. I was being lazy. She needs uh, 29 more cents. Um, and uh, to be honest with you, if you took away 679 from $10, you would have gotten 321, and that would not have been enough. But I just chose another way because guess what? We can. There's lots of different ways. I will not make you watch me do them all. I promise. Diego has three dollar bills, one uh, three quarters, one dime, and seven pennies. Sam has seven, uh, two dollar bills, five quarters, six dimes, and nine pennies. Huh. Okay. So let's just do this, right? Here's Diego. We'll call him D. Has three dollar bills. Uh, got that. Three quarters. Three quarters, seventy five cents. One dime is ten cents. Seven pennies. Let's add it up. Five. Notice how I lined up all the decimals. Five plus seven is twelve. Carry the one. One. So plus seven is eight. Plus one is nine. And then three ninety-two. Okay. Let's talk about Sam. Sam. Two dollar bills. What's that? Five quarters, there's four quarters and one dollar, so he has five quarters, so 125, six dimes, and nine pennies. I think this is gonna be close. Let's add it all up. Uh, so that looks like 14, carry the one. Um, one plus two is three, plus six is nine. And it looks like we have 394 for Sam. So I'm not gonna do any, I'm not gonna show you my work for this one. Sam has more money. And Sam has two cents more. So not much more. How much do they have in all? So let's just add them up. 392 plus 394. Um, I got a six, I have an 18. Bring the decimal straight down. Carry the one. Uh, 786 is what they have in all. Okay, I'm really looking forward to this next one. It's a little bit of review. So, um, Tanya has a box that measures 12 centimeters by seven centimeters by 19 centimeters. 
was the volume. Let's draw the box. This is not going to be two size, and I apologize. It's probably not even going to be a great drawing. So 12 centimeters. I, I'm just going to put them wherever, because I can turn it around if I need to. Here's my seven, because that looks, they're kind of like the same. I shouldn't have done it. Times 19. Um, I'm going to do seven times 12 times 19. Okay. And I'm going to do this one first. And I know that seven times 12, well, I know seven times 10 is 70. And two times seven is 14. I know this is 84. Okay. Times 19. Whoa. Okay, so we could do this a few different ways. We could multi, you could double digit um, multiplication, or I'm gonna actually do this. You ready for this? I'm gonna turn this into a. I'm gonna turn it in a different color. See if this even makes sense. I probably should have practiced this, but we're gonna go for it. Times 20 minus 84 times one. Okay, do you see it? Instead of 84 times 19, I'm going to do 84 times 20. So if I double 84, that's 160, 168. And there's a zero that I attach on there. And I subtract 84 from that. So let's just go do that, right? So I'm going to go right over here. 1680 minus 84. Well, look at that. I'm going to take 84 from 80. Well, I'll just show them my work. I think it's going to be just less than 1600. Um, there's a 10, 6, 5, and 17, 9, 5, 1. That equals 1,596, and it's cubic because there's three numbers we're multiplying centimeters. How much time do I have left? I have time for number nine. Let's do it. I'll leave that. I'll make it a little bit smaller. There we go. All right. Eric's keep track of rainwater. I love doing that, except we had a lot of rain this weekend. Um, on Monday, it rained one and three quarters centimeters. On Tuesday, it rained two and one eight centimeters. How much more did it rain on Tuesday than on Monday? Okay. Let's do it. Here's Monday. And here's... Uh, Tuesday. I'm going to actually go backwards, right? Okay. So Tuesday was 2 and 1 eighth. And um, Monday was 1 and 3 quarters. And I'm actually going to do something. I We could find common. I'll do that. I'll set it up the common denominators, but I'm going to actually not do it that way. So I know that um, I know there, there are 6 eighths and 3 fourths minus one and six eighths okay however watch this i'm gonna go i'm gonna do a number line just because what well, we can you ready i'm gonna go um i'm gonna start at one and three fourths and i'm gonna try and get to two and one eighth let's see if this makes sense this is just i'm just thinking of a number talk i'm gonna go um i'm gonna add a fourth oh that this isn't gonna be super accurate okay um that's gonna be two I'm going to add a fourth. And then I'm going to add an eighth. I know, I know the fourth should be bigger than the eighth. Just work with me here. Then I'm going to add those two up. One fourth plus one eighth. Well, I know that one fourth is uh, two eighths. Oops, I'm on the bottom of my paper, sorry. Two eighths plus one eighth. I think my answer is three eighths. I think this is um, three eighths. I could borrow, but I don't think I have to. And it's not three eighths just by itself. It's three eighths centimeters. But you could borrow. You could borrow from the whole um, and make that. Um, you could turn this into one and nine eighths minus one and six eighths. There you go. You can see it now, right? The three eighths. There's a few different ways you can do it. My time is almost out. Uh, make sure you bring me any questions that you have. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.